Hey guys, more questions. Thanks again for all your comments and questions. It's a great one. Would you consider doing a more in-depth video on the masculine feminine polarities? I've seen a lot of talk of different energies recently and while some seem authentic, similar to what you say in this video, most of the videos I find are from an ultra spiritual new age type of perspective. I'd like to hear more of your thoughts from a Christian perspective. First, we'll talk about worldview, then we'll talk about the masculine and feminine. This is a really good question. So worldview, anyone's worldview is who is the highest authority? In other words, who is the boss? What am I here for? What is the purpose of the world? And how do I go about doing that? And so in a Christian worldview, God is the boss, the designer, the creator. I have a telos, a purpose that God has put me on earth to do as a man, a separate purpose for a woman. They are different purposes in scripture. And then he gives us a moral guideline of how to go about doing being a man, being a woman on earth. What is our purpose? That's the Christian worldview. There is obviously a new age worldview, a liberal worldview, and an atheist worldview, libertarians, playboy, pickup artisty, pleasure seeking worldview, uh, nihilism, nihilistic worldview, Gnostics, Gnostic worldview who believe, oh, we're all just, we're all just a spirit and the world is bad. So we just need to pursue knowledge. There's all these different types of worldviews going on. Now those worldviews are all using God's creation and so they, they come up with their own whys and hows and who the ultimate authorities are. The fact that Christians are offended over New Age people saying that we should speak to our water and put crystals and minerals in it. And it's like, no, those are all created principles. Like minerals in our water is a real great thing. Speaking to your water, a sound waves affect water. It's their scientific experiments. <laughs> God says done. life or death is in the power of the tongue. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that the New Age are seeing the things that God has made and be like, oh yeah, that's good. We see that we'll use it. It goes the same for like the pickup artist, playboy type guys who understand success with sexual dynamics. You know, so the fact that you get all these pickup artist, playboy guys who are like, here's how to get a woman interested in you, how to talk to a woman, how to have a relationship with a woman. They are just seeing data points. I as a young man used to listen a lot to the atheist libertarian philosopher, Stefan Molyneux, and he did tons of data uh, studies on pair bonding, where he went through what makes successful marriages. And this is from an atheist libertarian guy. He's like, yeah, girls who only sleep with their husband have 80% successful marriages. That was a pattern picked up by a guy who wasn't a Christian, but again, they're picking up the, this is God's world. His patterns are at play. His dynamics, his systems are at play. It doesn't matter who picks the system up and says, I'm going to use the system. So <laughs> the data always points back to proving God's ways mm -hmm. <laughs> work. God's ways are better. It's the same as I was reading this. I did a homemaker's chats video on a, uh, plant book I was reading and it talks about the benefits of being outside. And this was from people who were very clearly spiritual new age and they're like using all of these like millions of years ago. God made creation. He made us. There is obviously going to be a blessing from being in creation because of how God made it. And so it's kind of a, we're not going to allow you to steal God's mm -hmm. ways, God's creation, and make it some weird thing without giving glory to God. And at the same time, we're not offended by it. You know, like you reading a book by New Age people. It's like... I learned from it. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> offended by it. Like you spit out the, the, the bones and mm -hmm. eat the meat. Uh, it's like Paul saying, you know, don't eat meat sacrificed to idols. If your conscience can't take it, then don't. But if your conscience can take it, bless it and eat. And so it comes the same now with talking about masculine and feminine. There's going to be a ton of Christians who are petrified of, but the New Age people said this, or the Playboy said this, or the atheists said this. Yeah, that's understandable. You need to be aware of who they are serving. Mm -hmm. If we are serving God, you know, so for instance, a lot of you have a bunch of rampant Satanists who made your cell phone and who made your car and who made the clothes that you're wearing. It, you know, your, your conscience isn't bothered by it because you know, you're just carrying on. Uh, but when it comes to certain things that could really bless you, there is definitely a war over the ownership of who's allowed to do those things. And so when it comes to masculine and feminine, the feminist liberal culture are petrified of the masculine. They're petrified of patriarchy, the father rule, 
They're petrified of husbands. They're petrified of the family unit. And so they'll do anything to destroy that, to destroy the tools that create that. And so just to chat a little bit about the masculine and the feminine polarity or energy, I would call it a purpose or a function, the masculine function, the feminine function. God created the man in the image of God. He created us to tend the garden, to steward creation, take dominion, to work. Work is a, is a good thing. And then he said, it's not good for a man to be alone. And so he created man a helpmeet, a woman. And the woman births children. That's a blessing. That's a good thing. Children are a blessing. They're not a burden. Together, we take dominion over this earth. Together, we worship the Lord. Together, we build a family. There's this masculine attracted to feminine. Feminine attracted to masculine. So if you want to destroy that, you've got to create androgyny, right? Take the energy, take the electricity out by just making two equal things that aren't really attracted to each other that are the same just different in different bodies mm -hmm. so i have noticed looking back at my time in my 20s in the church when i was in it i did not realize how androgynous church culture and christianity was in my experience to the point where I didn't even know there is an actual difference in how I outwork my Christianity because I'm a woman. Because in the circles that I was in, and I would say is quite common, men and women in Christianity do the same things. And unfortunately, it's like women do it better. Yeah. So we want women to do it. I was in a very charismatic, evangelical, uh, missional circle. And... Looking back at that, I can see how masculine I was made instead of me learning to embrace the femininity that God put in me of you were made to be a nurturer. You were made to bring children into the world. You were made to help your husband. These things that should have been said but to me. The problem with that is that you would have gotten married off and gone and helped a man rather than being available to the church to do all of the programs. Yeah, so it's like, we don't want to talk about any of these things. Instead, we want you to be on mission mm -hmm. for us. And I was. I, my heart was so sincere. I just wanted to be obedient to the Lord. And what I thought that looked like at that time was I'm going to use my single time of not being married to go out and pray for people, go on college campuses and pray for people, go in very dangerous places and pray for people, try to get people to give their lives to Jesus. Now that I'm in my 30s, I look back with such sadness at my 20s because that's the most fertile time of my entire life was in my 20s. And instead of being told to use that time to be fruitful and multiply, it was use this time to meet random strangers, get them to give their life to Jesus, get them to pray, you pray over them. And what an amazing testimony. Like now you can share your testimony at the next Bible study when we have testimony times and you can tell about this dangerous situation that you were in and how God protected you. And I look back and in those situations, I think, yeah, that was probably meant for a man to do. That was probably not the best case scenario for me to be by myself praying for a drunk, high, irresponsible person. Very dangerous. Did the Lord protect me? Yes. I have so many testimonies of me being in dangerous situations and it is obvious that the Holy Spirit was with me and protected me. So I spent all of my time looking back doing very masculine things, being on mission. Ladies are taught to be very ambitious and risky. That's, yes, that's a great word for yeah. it. For men, how they gain value in a hierarchy of men is strength, courage, and mastery. What popular Christianity in the West has done is say to them, you need to be a servant leader, you need to be soft, you need to be gentle, you need to be accommodating, you need to be agreeable, you need to be relational. Uh, you know, I grew up in this church denomination where their whole thing was friendship before function. They would always say that about, you know, we've got to have friendships and not just be out working. Men want function. Men are here to accomplish a mission. Men are here to work, to build, to fight, to protect. Function is a basis of all of our friendships. <laughs> yeah. You know, you go to a sports team, that's my friends. You go to work, that's my friends. The people I work with, the people I do my hobbies with, function is the basis of any friendship. And so the church is trying to invert this and be like, okay guys, you all need to calm down. You need to stop being risky. 
You need to stop being ambitious. You need to stop being confrontational and disagreeable because that's mean and it's uncomfortable for everybody here. So you've got to push the ladies and you know, so all the ladies start taking on masculine traits. And so you have these inversions where then, you know, an androgynous guy gets married to an androgynous girl. And so now I've got to serve her and make her happy. And we, we fall into this whole trap of happy wife, happy life. And you have pastors get up on stage and be things like, you know, the secret of a happy marriage is yes, ma'am. That is straight out of hell. Like that is the doctrine of demons because you're, you're creating a slave, a man who is a slave to his wife's emotions, his wife's happiness, and whatever the culture is telling her uh, to be ambitious and risky about. And often the culture is telling women to be ambitious about having a huge house and two new cars and degrees and- Whatever they can show off. Whatever they can show off. And so you become a slave to keeping your wife happy in this insatiable materialism of the Christian church, unfortunately. So you have this inversion of, of its androgyny, but, but it's technically a, it's effeminate men and masculine women. And that's what we married into. Mm -hmm. We married each other at that place yeah. of, I was very missional minded, ambitious towards evangelizing. Mm -hmm. I remember thinking, even when we first got married, I had my like morning quiet time with my Bible and journaling. And I expected it, the androgyny thing. I expected your time with the Lord to look like my time with the Lord. When we were married, I'm like, why isn't he going out and praying for people on college campuses? And I would drag him along with me. You were not into it. But again, the Christian worldview we were in was yes, uh, ma'am. Yeah, if this makes you happy, then that's what we'll go so do. So I like drug him on campus with me to pray for college students, and then God is so gracious to us. It it was a few years, uh, and and that's why we are really grateful towards Lori Alexander because she was really the first influence on me of understanding. Wait a second, men and women are different, and I think I've been living very masculine. And so. All hell breaks loose when you invert that dynamic and say, well, the lady's actually supposed to serve the man and what he's trying to accomplish. If you had to get up into any church, especially if they call themselves conservative, you know, oh, it's a conservative church or denomination or whatever, and you had to say that a woman should say, yes, sir, and she should serve her husband's mission and should accommodate her life around her husband's mission and purpose all hell would break loose. You would be kicked out of that church. Uh, the men would feel embarrassed and sheepish and because they're going to go home and they're going to have trouble from their wives now because you've made them upset. Just read the comment section of our submission yeah. video. <laughs> we, we started digging deeper into, and unfortunately, you know, you, you don't really find this in Christian circles. Uh, you know, praise God for the people who do write on this. And, but for me, I, I had to start going into the, the masculinity, the manosphere is what they call it. It's where men talk about masculine and, and feminine sexual polarity, the dynamics of what it means to be a man and be successful at being a man. Now remember, they're not Christian, so their worldview is self-serving, pleasure-seeking. Whereas as a Christian, my worldview is to be a patriarch and to serve the Lord and serve my family. So I came in and looked at all these tools and I was like, yeah, I can see that. I can see how the, the feminine that just runs wild and has no frame and has no discipline it can destroy, you know, the Bible says that you'd rather live in, in, a corner. in a corner of a house or in a desert or on the rooftop than with a contentious woman. It says in, in Genesis that the curse on the woman is that she's going to try and rule the man. So the Manosphere guys were dealing with this in their own way of, hey, here's all the tools and tactics to deal with being a man, how to deal with women. And so you can come in and be very offended as a Christian, or you can say, wait, these are some really true things that I as a man need to start holding frame. What does that mean? It means I am framing the meaning, the worldview, I'm framing the worldview for our marriage, for our family. Here's why we were created. Here's who we are serving. Here's what we are doing. This is the frame. And you set the vision. And you set for... the vision, set the boundaries. And so the feminine energy gets to fill that frame and energize that frame. Now there is this thing where in our sinful state or natures, if you want to call it that, as a man, I want to avoid holding frame because it's hard, because it requires duty and responsibility and bravery and competence and strength. 
It's hard being a man. It's hard going for something and trying to be successful. And likewise for a lady, there's this, it's hard to submit and fill a frame and to say, I will put my hopes in your success and I will serve you in our direction. And so the woman wants to test that frame and wants to push against that frame to see if the man really means what he means. And so you get this uh, constant testing of authority from the feminine sinful nature. So when you said the feminine energy fills that frame, would you could you explain that? Because I think that might be the question she's mm -hmm. saying of what do you mean by like the energies? Yeah. So for men, the masculine tenets of strength and mastery and courage. Likewise, there's feminine tenets of beauty and helpfulness and cheerfulness. And beauty and helpfulness and cheerfulness energizes a man. You know, that energy energizes a man to go and compete and go and succeed and go and achieve. And so it's very important that a man has a helpmeet who energizes him and doesn't deflate him or condemn him or scold him or emasculate him and pull him into serving her and trying to appease her all the time. And I think it's fairly obvious when you see an emasculated mm -hmm. man, well, we, we wouldn't have known that when we were in that realm, but I think getting out of it, it's you can very clearly see, especially unfortunately in church dynamics when women are in leadership and it, you know the women but the husbands are nowhere to be found. And I think the reason this is so helpful is because there's peace being in your role, even if it's harder, like the, because we live in such a confused world of gender roles, it is challenging because you're going against, unfortunately, the norm of today, but you start seeing how things that used to be normal are abnormal. It's a very funny thing, like looking back now, of just how androgynous you are, that women think she should be doing manly things. I think that's the yeah. deception, is when you trick girls into thinking what they should be doing is all of the masculine things, yeah. which is going to university. Yeah, university is a masculine thing. And again, not for all men. I don't think all men should be going to university. But university, the, you have to understand what university is. It's a part of a work. So if this is my domain or my field that I want to work in for the next 60 years and create value in, university will help me to multiply and 10x my effectiveness in that domain. That's why I go to university. Go become an engineer or a doctor or a lawyer, whatever your, you think your domain is as a man. Because for the next 60 to 80 years, you're going to be working and creating value. A lady's purpose is to get married and have children and be her husband's helpmeet. To go into, into university and get 100 grand in debt and then go and try and work 60 to 80 years in a domain, it's a misplacement of energy. It's a sunken cost of resources. You then have to ask, well, what happens in this masculine space where ladies are taught to have the sexual appetite and expectations of men and go and sleep with as many guys as they can and party and drink and you're destroying the value uh, that you have to give to a husband. Mm -hmm. You know, you may think you're upskilling yourself, accrediting yourself to become more valuable to a husband. The majority of men don't care about your accreditation or or your degree or what corporate job you work at. They, they care about are you beautiful, are you helpful, and are you cheerful. Mm -hmm. And University will destroy those three traits in you to try and make you a second-rate man of strength, courage, and mastery. And it's the same, unfortunately, in many churches. They try and create strong, courageous, masterful women, and they try and create beautiful, helpful, cheerful men. And so there's this inversion of the dynamic. Our role as a man is to go and work. Work is good. The Bible speaks tons on work and wealth and building a family and taking dominion over land, you know, praise God, go be, um, you know, your gift will make room for you and bring you before great men, go give your gift. And for women, it talks a ton of look well after the ways of your household, love your husband, love your children, bring up your children the way they should go and they will not depart from it. And how many stories of there are women, barren women who are praying for children? You have Sarah, you have Samuel's mother, Hannah, you have Elizabeth. Elizabeth. There's so many stories of women crying out for children and it's like, Hello, <laughs> that must be what we're made to do is be fruitful and multiply and men cannot do that. <laughs> 
Only women can do that. So why would we want to try to become men when God says be fruitful and multiply and only do that if you're married? So that's step number one is let's get people married. Number two, let's get women out of the masculine realms and get them home, which is the Proverbs 31 woman. Mm -hmm. Everything she does is of her home, under her husband's authority. Yeah, and and this goes as well to let you know, a ton of Christians will agree women shouldn't be pastors, that's fine. But they can be anything else. They can be a president, they can be a sheriff, they can be in the military, they can be journalists. Yeah, they can, but should they? Because what you're doing is all of these public domains require conflict, require strength, require courage, require mastery, that is a very masculine endeavor. Tons of conservative Christians will follow all of these lady Christian or conservative journalists and media influencers and be like, wow, they're so brave and they're so courageous. Their whole job is fighting with men in public. They are contentious women in public positions and they are in no ways conservative or traditional. And so this idea that women can be anything they want to be as long as it's not a pastor, that's not the Christian worldview. That's not the Christian position. The Christian position is that it is the highest honor for a woman to be a wife and a mother. Everything else is secondary to that. And so that's one of the problems in our culture and especially in our Christian culture is you get all of these women who have been told that being a wife and a mother is not honorable. It's not the highest calling. It's not important. It's not a great work. Mm -hmm. And so what they do is they put their children in public school or in daycare and they go and do mission work for other people's children who are dysfunctional while their children just go straight on the conveyor belt to being dysfunctional so that some other woman 20 years from now has to go become a missionary to reach your children. And it's this just doom loop of Christian children being just fed to the culture because women are believing this lie that it's not enough just to be a wife and a mother. If God said to you, this is your purpose is to help your husband, to love your husband, to love your children, to look well after the ways of your household, who are we to say, no, it's not good enough. We should be a second rate man. It's disrespectful to God. It's disrespectful to the ladies who want to be obedient to God because you're taking on the duty that every other man has been allowed to shirk. The burden of leadership, heavy is the head that wears the crown. If you want to become a patriarch and take on the burden of providing and protecting for your family, for your tribe, for your neighborhood, your local area, that is a hard work. It's going to be a confrontational work. People are going to come against you. And so you have to carry that burden of conflict and of being disagreeable and of holding frame, even though the whole world rages against your purpose and against your vision. It's a hard job. And so a lot of men are just, they'll check out and they'll be like, no, it's easier just to go, you know, metaphorically live in my cabin in the woods and forget the world. But as Christian men, we're called not to escape, but we're called to take dominion, to wage in to the culture and take space, to take ownership and be in authority over as many things as we can be in authority over and bring order, bring Christ's rule over the things that we can control. And I think we say all of this, we're in our 30s. So we look back at our 20s and think we would have been so much better served in our 20s if we knew these things. Nobody in our circles glorified being a wife and a mother. What was glorified was testimony time of who'd you pray for, uh, what cool miracles happened. And we love miracles. We're praying for miracles. Praise God for miracles. But what better miracle is there? What better blessing is there than raising children who love you, love the Lord, love each other? That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Those are the testimonies you want to see. Those are the people and the stories you want to follow. That's not always what is seen or what is glorified yeah. in a lot of... Yeah, I think that's a good way of saying like, what do we wish we had known about these dynamics in our 20s is for young men, go crush at your work. Like what is... You know, we talk about, well, what must girls do with their passions? What must men do with their passions? What are you passionate about as a man? Go work at that thing. Go find that domain, that industry, that whatever it is that you're passionate about, the problem that you think needs to be solved, the mission that you think needs to be accomplished. Go and crush at that thing. Go hard, build wealth, build influence. Go be a man on a mission. Go be disagreeable. Go pick fights with the culture. That's what we should be telling the young men. And for the young ladies, it's, 
you should be cultivating your beauty, your helpfulness, your cheerfulness, and looking for a young man who is crushing and then help him with his mission, become his helpmeet, have children with him. Praise the Lord. <laughs> God bless you guys. <laughs>